Nuclear thermal rockets are a great research area for NASA, said Elon Musk. The SpaceX CEO emphasized how alternative rocket fuels could allow for faster travel times around the solar system, which is especially exciting as his company develops plans to create a leaping civilization on the planet. Although the idea could provoke the Chernobyl scene, proponents speculate that astronauts could reduce astronauts' radiation exposure. Space is already hitting passengers with high doses and while the spacecraft has a nuclear reactor inside, it will generate its own radiation which will be outpaced by reduced travel times. However, in 2019 the nuclear space laws changed and work on the next generation rockets has begun. Let's dive into the video and learn how a nuclear starship would help us reach Mars in just 100 days. But before we move forward in the video, make sure to subscribe for more content and like this video to receive similar suggestions from YouTube. Also, we highly appreciate your comments. Now let's get straight into the video. With the dream of Mars on the minds of NASA and Elon Musk, a manned long range space mission is just around the corner. But you may be surprised to learn that modern rockets are not much faster than the rockets of the past. There are many reasons why a faster spacecraft is better and nuclear power rockets are one way to do it. They offer many advantages over traditional fuel powered rockets or modern solar powered electric rockets. But in the last 40 years, there have only been eight US nuclear reactor launches in space. Why is there any need for speed? The first step in space travel involves a rocket launcher to put a ship into orbit. These are the big fuel powered engines that people imagine when they think of rocket launches and gravity means they're unlikely to go away anytime soon. Once a ship reaches space, things get interesting. In order to escape Earth's gravity and reach destinations in outer space, ships need additional acceleration. This is where the nuclear system comes into play. If astronauts want to venture a little further than the moon and maybe Mars, they'll have to move very, very fast. The place is big and everything is far away. There are two reasons why faster rockets are better for long range space travel. One is safety and the other is timing. Astronauts traveling to Mars are exposed to high levels of radiation which can cause serious long term health problems such as cancer and infertility. Radiation protection can help but it's very heavy and the longer the mission, the more shielding is needed. A better way to reduce radiation exposure is to get there sooner. But human safety is not the only advantage. As space agencies continue to venture into space it is important to get data from unmanned missions as soon as possible. It took Voyager 2 12 years to reach Neptune where it took some amazing pictures while in flight. If Voyager 2 had a faster propulsion system, astronomers could have had these images and the information they contain years in advance. The speed is good, but why is the nuclear system faster? Once a ship has escaped Earth's gravity, there are three important things to consider when comparing any propulsion system. Boost or thrust, how fast a system can accelerate the ship. Mass efficiency how much thrust the system can produce with a given amount of fuel. Energy density, how much energy a given amount of fuel can produce. The most common propulsion systems in use today are chemical propulsion, i.e. rockets with the combustion of simple fuels, and electrical propulsion with solar energy. Chemical propulsion systems provide a lot of buoyancy, but chemical rockets are not very efficient and the rocket fuel is less energy efficient. The Saturn V rocket carrying astronauts to the moon produces a glide of 35 million newtons and carries 950,000 gallons of fuel. While most of the fuel is used to bring rockets into orbit, the limits are clear. It takes a lot of heavy fuel to get anywhere. The electric propulsion system creates traction using electricity generated by the solar panels. The most common method is to use an electric field to accelerate the ion, such as a Hall booster. Typically used to power satellites, these devices can be more than five times the mass efficiency of chemical systems, but they produce far less traction, about three newtons, or just enough to get the car from zero to 60 miles per hour in about two and a half hours. The source of energy, the sun, is essentially unlimited, but becomes less useful the further the ship moves from the sun. One of the reasons why nuclear power missiles hold promise is their extraordinary energy density. Uranium fuel used in nuclear reactors has an energy density of 4 million times that of hydrazine, a common rocket chemical fuel. It is much easier to put small amounts of uranium into space than hundreds of thousands of gallons of fuel. So what about thrust and mass efficiency? Two options for nuclear. Engineers have developed two main types of nuclear space systems. The first is known as nuclear thermal propulsion. This system is very powerful and quite efficient. They use small fission reactors, similar to those on nuclear submarines to heat a gas such as hydrogen, and that gas is then accelerated through a rocket nozzle to provide traction. 
NASA engineers estimate that a nuclear power mission to Mars will be 20 to 25 percent shorter than a trip on a chemical powered rocket. Nuclear thermal propulsion is more than twice as efficient as chemical propulsion. That is, it produces twice as much thrust with the same mass of propellant, and it can produce 100,000 newtons of thrust. That's enough power to accelerate the car from zero to 60 miles per hour in about a quarter of a second. The second nuclear staged rocket system is known as nuclear electric propulsion. The nuclear power system has not yet been built, but the idea is to use a high performance reactor to generate electricity, which will then be used as a haul drive to power the electric drive system. It will be very efficient, about three times better than a nuclear thermal propulsion system, because nuclear reactors can produce a lot of energy. Many separate electrical boosters can be operated at the same time to produce good thrust. For very long missions, nuclear power systems will be the best choice because they do not require solar energy, are highly efficient, and can generate relatively large thrust. But while nuclear powered rockets hold promise, there are still many technical issues to be resolved before they can be deployed. Why aren't there nuclear powered rockets yet? Nuclear thermal propulsion systems have been studied since the 1960s but have not yet been flown into space. First enacted in the US in the 1970s, the regulations essentially require a case-by-case -case review and approval of each nuclear space project by a number of government agencies and the explicit approval of the president. Coupled with a lack of funding for research into nuclear rocket systems, this environment has prevented further research of nuclear reactors for use in outer space. That changed when the Trump administration issued a presidential memorandum in August 2019. Despite the need to maintain the safest nuclear launches, the new policy allows nuclear missions involving small amounts of nuclear material to skip the multiple agency approval processes. Only sponsoring agencies such as NASA must certify that the mission complies with safety recommendations. Larger nuclear missions will go through the same process as before. Along with these regulatory revisions, NASA received $100 million in its 2019 budget for the development of a nuclear thermal propulsion system. DARPA is also developing a nuclear thermal space propulsion system to enable national security operations beyond Earth's orbit. After 60 years of stagnation, it is possible that a nuclear-powered rocket will fly into space within a decade. This exciting achievement will usher in a new era in space exploration. Humans will fly to Mars and scientific experiments will make new discoveries in our solar system and beyond. Is the nuclear option safe? Shorter missions will limit crew exposure to space radiation, but concerns remain about radiation emitted by the spacecraft's nuclear reactors. This is mitigated by the rocket design. The liquid fuel stored between the engine and the crew area blocks radioactive particles and acts as excellent radiation protection. The distance between the crew and the reactor also provides support, and each Starship design would have placed a residence at the other end of the rocket toward the reactor. To protect humans on Earth, the NTP spacecraft will not take off directly from the Earth. Instead, an ordinary chemical rocket would put it into orbit, and only then would it start its nuclear reactor. It can do very little damage in orbit because explosions and thermal radiation cannot travel through a vacuum. If disaster strikes and the missile reactor collapses, parts of it will not land on Earth or any other planet for tens of thousands of years. At that point, the radioactive material naturally decomposes to the point where it is no longer dangerous. That's it for today, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.